Okay, so today I'm going to be showing how to build something like this, like this ex external cat structure over here. Not exactly like this, and I'll explain some of the differences and why in a second. As you can see, uh, my cat might be over there sitting very comfortably on it. Um, but, you know, basically, uh, you know, there's going to be some differences in the legs. And I would like to point out that this is, you know, completely you know piece by piece my design and I'm not saying that to brag I'm actually saying that because if somebody that actually knows what you're doing looks at it and decides that there's something better that can be done by all means they probably know better than me because the the bad news is this is done uh, part by part step by step the good news is I am not particularly the most uh, handy person in the world so it kind of falls under the category of if I can do it just about anybody can I should have started the recording earlier, but I thought of this later. But what you see over there is every one of the pieces um, already cut and sized properly. And they're standing over there because I waterproofed them with a, just a Thompson water sealer. I can show you what that is in a second. And they are out there sitting to dry. I'll try to provide a little more detail later as I'm using them. But essentially I just bought the cheapest reasonable looking piece of wood I could find. Uh, measure exactly the right height that I would and width that I would need for the window. Um, cut them, then I sand them, them, and and as I just said, I waterproof them. And this is Luke who came out here to inspect the filming process. Although I'm not including this in the video, as I mentioned, you will need some hardware skills and a kind of a makeshift table like that to cut all the pieces to size. It's probably a good thing that I'm not showing you this because I didn't want to give anybody the wrong impression that I actually know what I'm doing with that and then get sued because I actually don't know what I'm doing and I'm probably doing everything in a highly unsafe manner so good thing I'm not taping. But either you're going to have to saw and send things yourself with a circular saw or whatever you can use or you can, I believe you might be able to get them cut to size for you at Home Depot you know for cost but as you can see there's a, a variety of different little sizes so you'd have to measure everything perfectly take them a list and hope that they'll do it for you they might I'm not a specialist on that I just figured I'll do it myself uh, just to give the complete picture that outside stand actually connects doesn't really connect but complements this inside stand over here um, and actually the uh, this new inside stand I'm building a new outside one to go with this new inside one that I built over here but again with a slightly different design which when we get to it, I'll explain um, the differences and why I decided to change. So, um, okay, here we go. Okay, right now I'm going to work on the on the screened area, which is, to be honest with you, the probably the longest, most time-consuming part, but also at least something you can do indoors while you're watching TV and while you're having, you know, some friends keeping you company over here. Right, so this is the basic idea of it. I have those four pieces in the bottom. As you can see, I haven't assembled anything yet. In fact, that's pretty much how I measure them. I basically put the big piece of wood on, across this, uh, across, you know, the base, and I use a regular tape measure, and I kind of tape what I need. And then I'm going to have uh, four of those pieces of wood that are going to go up over here. Like this, whoops, it's kind of hard to, to hold and tape at the same time. And then sort of a repeat of this whole base over here on the top. And I'm going to attach all of them with the little, uh, you know, corner braces over here. So the first thing I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to start marking all of the corners uh, with little pencils. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, now I'm going to mark, you know, the little holes on all of the corners over here. Because, frankly, because I want to drill, uh, you know, pre-drill the places where I'm going to screw. Because trying to screw directly to the wood is kind of a pain. And sometimes it cracks the wood. You know, dr pre-drilling makes it a heck of a lot easier. Um, so I'm going to do that, but it's actually I notice it's much easier to do it if I actually stand the wood up like this um, and do it with a corner again. I apologize for not taping really good because it's hard to tape wood and tape at the same time. I don't want to bug my family. You know, standing up like this is probably just a little easier to do. So that's how I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hold it like that and then I'm going to, you know, uh, pencil it in. Right now I pre-marked about a bazillion of those little. Uh, Whole, you know those little marks over here. I number them so I can know which edge goes with each edge. You know, have to do that. It's a personal preference. Um, and now I'm gonna pre-drill each one of those holes. I kind of this is a screw that came with the, you know, with the little corner braces. And so I just kind you kind of look for a drill bit that is a little smaller than the, 
you know, than the screw, you know, a little more, you know, less thick than the screw. Uh, so we can, you know, so the thread still goes in. Uh, and again, this was very time consuming. As I never said, this was easy. It's a labor of love, it takes a while. Um, well, it's actually, it's easy, but it's time consuming. All right, I'll be back after I drill about the gazillion uh, little holes. Okay, now I'm just gonna drill the little holes. I mean, you don't wanna you don't wanna drill all the way through. You only wanna drill as far as it takes to you know to kind of help out the length of this uh, the screw even a little less. And again, my disclaimer again: if you do not know your way with a drill or anything else like that, please do not do this. I don't wanna get sued. Uh, I'm not particularly handy, but you know I can handle a drill without killing myself. So if you don't, ask the help from a friend or something, or buy one of those already made if you can find it. Okay, and now I just basically match the matching quantities. I, mean, I put the little numbers over here. I actually did a horrible job of writing the numbers, so I'm having a hard time reading them now. So I recommend you make, make better numbers. Oh, be quiet! Barking. And then, you know, I match over there, and then I'm going to match the ones that go up to. That one actually I can read is a 9, the 9 over here. So that's what I recommend you do, and now I'm going to start putting the little braces. And now we get to see if that effort of drilling the holes paid off because I'm going to put this in and hopefully it will go in nice and easy. I'll tell you in a second. Turn off, you did. Now I don't, I don't recommend you tighten all the way in. Let's just kind of make sure they all kind of go in and get, have a little extra because then we can sort of adjust a little bit. You know, there's a little bit of give over here in each direction and you can always use that to your advantage if it's not quite perfectly aligned. So I'm going to go off and tie off about 300 corners over here. Here it is, I did get the base in. It's not exactly a you know, work of art. It's just a little bit of extra in some of the corners, but you know, I, I'm not planning on submitting this to an art museum anytime soon, so it's certainly good enough for this. Um, if you, uh, you know, one recommendation I have, if anybody wants to, you know, thought that they might be able to just get those, those corners uh, together by just putting nails on them, um, I did try that before my other one, and that didn't quite work. It was very wobbly with just the nails. That's why I ended up using the braces. But again, I'm not the handiest of guys. If uh, somebody was handier than I am has a better suggestion, by all means, try it out. Uh, if you looked at the one outside when I first showed it and you noticed, you might have noticed that the wood that I used is probably about half the size on the one outside. Uh, you know, no particular reason for that other than I thought that the, the little wood was just a little more annoying to work with. I thought with the you know with the thicker pieces of wood which weren't really that much more expensive if at all, it was a you know it was a little sturdier so you know so that's why I feel I would work with a thicker one. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting all the pieces you know like all of those up pieces over here you know and again just keep tying little braces to them and hopefully it's gonna be all done soon. All right, it's all done. Uh, as I you know I said it's you can see it's a little you know rough around the edges over here you know it's not perfectly lined up over here but you know it's important thing it's you know it's sturdy I could even be sturdy because I got a little lazy and I actually didn't put you know the little joints in every corner as you can see I have one in here but and in here but I didn't put one in here so I have in here and in here but I didn't put one in here anybody is you know frankly if you do that you're probably gonna make it even a little sturdier but again I got just a tad bit lazy, you know. Now the next step is going to be to put on the screen. Okay, the next step now is going to be to attach the whole you know, screen structure to the base over here. Now the way I did that and the other one that I liked, instead of actually connecting this thing fully, uh, I like the ability of being able to move this thing around separately from the base because then I can take it out if I want to replace the screen and uh, you know it's just a little less bulky. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to drill a hole right here, a big hole, and I'm going to put this big carriage bolt that's going to go through both pieces of wood. Oh, let me show from this angle. Both pieces of wood over here. Okay, and it's not going to screw in. I'm going to make the hole big enough so it just goes right through. And then I'm going to attach in the bottom. Oh, hold on. With one of those butterfly nuts over here because that I can take in and out easily. Okay, now it's time to put the screen. Uh, it's just basically regular bug screen, you know, the charcoal one. It seemed to work for me. It seemed to be, uh, you know, nice see-through. Uh, I actually forgot to take the cutting, but you know, honestly, that's pretty self-explanatory. I just went over here, put the whole, you know, I have one big roll. Where's, where's the big roll? There's the big roll. I'm just kind of put the oh no, there's a the big roll. I put the big roll over there, and it's kind of surround the thing and you know, cut. Well, I didn't try to be perfect at first. I'm just gonna I figure I give enough space, and then after I have the thing taped, uh, you know, tacked in, then I'll go around with the scissor or cut it better. And I already did one over here. All I'm going to use, and again, it's not particularly artistic, but for an outside 
piece anyways uh, and I'm just gonna tack it in so I did the one I'm gonna do that with all the other ones and just basically tack it around that will take care of you know one two curl of it of it all around and then I'm gonna have to cut a piece to size to go right here I won't need for the other side because the other side is gonna go on the window okay so this is the final product uh, since it's a nice sunny day out I'll be working outside uh, and uh, the next part we're gonna do is the foot and the base of the stand I'll show you that in a second today I have two assistants working outside with me uh, and this is what we're gonna build next we're gonna do the base now as I said it's gonna be a slightly different design because I decided not to do this internal leg over here I'm just gonna have that hang against the side I will still do this funky little base over here this is something that I came up with the last time uh, it's sort of my anti-tipping idea It's basically a little foot that sticks out to try to prevent uh, the whole thing from you know to, to reduce the chances that the whole thing is gonna tip forward okay so to support that leg the little footy leg that I do we need one of those it's kind of a flat braces over here on the back and then another one of those big corner braces over here on the front I actually tried at one point to do just a big corner one but then it tends to kind of the back tends to kind of come out like this so you know you need the combination of the two of them and just like I did before I am gonna mark all the holes in with a pencil and then drill with the driller to kind of prepare for the screws that I'm gonna need to put in all right, the legs came out pretty good. You know, putting the the marking the thing down worked very well. Uh, you know, it's actually pretty nice and sturdy. So the next step is going to be attach them to the base over there, that base that you see sitting on top of my workbench. Uh, I actually turned the base upside down because to mark this down, it's going to be a lot easier to mark it down like this than to kind of try to, you know, than to try to hold the thing and and balance it while I mark it. So. You know, imagine this is basically the table sitting upside down, and I'm going to mark all the holes with pencils, and then I'm going to put that big heavy brace right there. It's going to, you know, keep the legs sturdy. Okay, the legs are on now, and they actually are distinctively, uh, you know, out of sync, but that's okay. Uh, you know, hopefully it's going to improve when I put those two sort of stabilizing pieces of woods across over here like this. Let's see, I'm going to, you know, nail them over here in front of both of them. See it like that. I put one on the bottom one on the top over here and if it's true that still doesn't work then we provide something else every time I do one of those I figure out at the end that I have to improvise something and uh, so let's go do that these ones I'm actually just gonna nail it uh, they're, they're thin enough and that in the past I've managed to nail those pretty well so I'll try it with just a simple small nail I don't want anything very big because then it's gonna you can split the wood all right there it is you can see the lower supporting beam over here the higher one over here this is actually the way I kind of supported them to nail. It actually worked out pretty well. Uh, you know, I used a narrow, small little nail like this one over here, as you can see, I think. See, it's not a very big one. And now let's stand it up and see how it fits. I still have a little rubber base to put over here in the bottom that I will use to adjust the size. And uh, let's just hope for the best. So there it is. It's actually looking not too bad at all. I'm better than expected on the first try. I just kind of put a flush against the window over here and, and as I explained earlier needless to say the reason why it fits on the window is because obviously I measure you know I measure that base uh, base on the window uh, I will probably even put a little velcro over there it's uh, mostly leveled over here you can actually see the level it's a little bit tipping over it's a little bit kind of angled in but it's actually the way I want it a because I rather it tips in than tips out so it doesn't tip over and B because I will put a little velcro over there on the base kind of help it keep it sturdy the only thing I notice is that I notice that it's a little wobbly in this direction sort of in and out you know sort of sideways so uh, to kind of counteract that I'm gonna put a couple of those corner braces either the really big ones over here or the smaller ones probably the smaller ones I'm just gonna throw them in this corner over here to kind of help you know keep that like, like I said for something that's completely custom made like this uh, a it's not gonna look incredibly pretty maybe you kind of adapt as you go along Okay, so like I said, I put a couple, you know, an extra little brace over here to kind of keep this thing from wobbling in. Uh, as it so happens, I actually had this at the house, but if I had to go out to Home Depot to get it, it wouldn't have been the first or the second or the third. Uh, it happens to me all the time. Okay, now I'm going to just kind of put this uh, kind of a 
kind of rubbery, grippy thing on the bottom of the leg over here. It's uh, self-adhesive. Uh, this is stuff that you, people you, you can find in the in the aisle that has the, the things you put on the bottom of tables and chairs just kind of to keep furniture from sliding. Uh, okay, now here's the whole assembly hanging by the window. I put the little tape on my the little padding on my footies. So the only thing I need to do now is use the you know the carriage bolt and the butterfly nuts to actually tie the thing up and then we'll push it against the window and let's see how that works. Okay, so there it goes against the window. Uh, it's actually not a perfect fit. Uh, to be honest, uh, you know, you can see if you can see over there, there's a little extra gap over there. Uh, it's a better gap on, you know, it's a little tighter on the other side. And again, I wouldn't expect to. It's not like the floor is particularly level, uh, but it's you know sturdy enough. The the legs, you know, the legs uh, prevent it from falling in that direction. The little, uh, you know, the special footy over there. Uh, and particularly, I'm going to throw a little velcro over here, and that's going to keep it even sturdier against the window. Okay, so as you can see, I put a little Velcro over here on the bottom of the table and a little Velcro over here. Yeah, and Velcro is a wonderful thing because you can always take it out. Uh, people in the house don't get upset that you're nailing the window, so uh, it works well. Okay, one of the last things I'm going to do, and I did that in the other one too, is to kind of help bug protect those corners over here, make sure they're kind of, you know, tight and bugs don't sneak in. I take some of the leftover screen that I have and I kind of put an extra screen padding over here. You're going to see I just kind of cut a reasonable amount and kind of uh, tack it to the sides over here and just kind of squeeze it in, the top squeeze it in the sides and that just gives a little extra protection against bugs. So I'm just going to tack that over there on the top uh, and again this is one place where you don't have to be perfect because really after I tack that I'm just going to want to kind of squish it in here just kind of make sure I kind of close in all of the gap that I can with the extra screen. And I'll do that again also in both sides. Okay, now from the inside over here, I already opened the window and I put this carpet inside. This is just regular outside carpet. There's a little bit of action on the other side, but that's because I originally cut this carpet as a leftover one, as an actual one for the first one that I showed you guys. Uh, so it's not measured perfect to this one. So later on, I'll probably, you know, cut over there at that edge so it fits perfect. And the, the last thing I'm going to do is you just put a little bit of the same screen trick that I did over here to kind of cover, cover this gap over here to again try to you know, keep bugs from coming in. Alright, so there it is with a satisfied customer waiting on the inside. And you know, the last time she tried to use one of those, the owner of the other one over there uh, was not too happy about it and uh, there was a little bit of a scuffle so uh, I think Mittens over here is going to wait a little bit just to make sure this one really is hers.